So what's the difference between reasoning models and the other models in ChatGPT? You can select GPT-40 as I'm recording this video in May of 2025. That's great for most tasks, according to this drop-down menu. I've also got access to O3, which uses advanced reasoning, and O4 Mini and Mini O4 Mini High. Some of the old ones are GPT-4.5 and 4.1. That's where we are now. But the big distinction here is between reasoning models and I guess these are vanilla models, great for most tasks. If you use ChatGPT 4.0, here I've got two chats in this folder. If you don't know about projects, when you open the sidebar in ChatGPT, you can organize your chats by projects. And so if you are finding your chronological chat history is getting a little out of control, you can drag and drop into projects. And so I'm gonna come back into this project that I have for model comparisons, and I've put two chats in here. And this is what I like about projects, is you can go and scroll through the chats that are still sequential in chronological order, which one you did most recently. And I did one prompt in 4.0, and I said, I run an AI training business. What's the number one external challenge we're facing in our market right now? And it went and did some searches from the Australian and the ADECO group. Once again, this is the, the model 4.0. It's not the reasoning model, it's just, it's a faster model. It uses fewer tokens and it gets you answers quicker. And so I said, what's the worst case scenario if we don't solve this market challenge? And it painted the worst case scenario for me. And then I said, break this down. And I tried asking it to use O1 reasoning, couldn't get it. It just did it's the best it could. What's the root cause? What's the simplest possible solution? And what assumptions should we test? Explain your reasoning back to me in a way a skeptical executive team would find persuasive. And so then it broke it down for me, but it used the O1, one objective, one cause, one solution, which I think is a hallucination. That might be an actual reasoning thing that I don't know about, but the prompt was, the result was okay. But then, I ran it again by changing the model from 4.0 to 0.3. And 0.3 uses advanced reasoning. And I'll show you the result, and then I'll show you the distinction between the two. I'll run a prompt through each of them. I did the same three prompt sequence. I run an AI training business. What's the number one external challenge we're facing in our market right now? And it thought for a while. And this thinking process is when, I love looking at the reasoning. And when I show you in a minute, I'll do a reasoning prompt and then we can see how it thinks. It spends more time doing research, going to links, and it spends more time thinking about its response before it gives it back. And so eventually what it gave me is hype hangover. I like this because it's, it's succinct. It gives me the number one challenge in a bite-sized phrase, but it also gives it to me with statistics that support this up. Only 1% of companies say their Gen AI rollout is actually mature. Surveys show 5.4% of firms have formally deployed Gen AI, while 45% admit they lack AI skilled talent and 75% worry about data security. And so then I did the second prompt. What's the worst case scenario? And it only took 27 seconds. And the worst case, if we ride the hype hangover into the ground, and then it gave it to me in a table the dominoes and why it falls. And then the financial outcome, the strategic and reputation outcome followed by a bottom line. And then I gave it the same prompt, break this down, what's the root cause, the simplest possible solution, and what assumptions should we test? Explain your reasoning back to me in a way a skeptical executive team would find persuasive. And this was a shorter response. It took a minute and a little bit to give me a much better short response. Oh wait, no, it is longer. But it says, first, here's the root cause, three bullets, easy to read. The simplest viable fix, three bullets, easy to read, and the key assumptions to test. And then why this persuades a skeptical executive team. And it gives me the big takeaways. Data beats doctrine, a concrete reversible step, a 30 day sprint, it's cheap, time boxed and either proves value or fails fast. And there are aligned incentives. And so I really like this as a way of thinking. But let's see how they both reason. Okay, so I'm gonna come into the model comparisons. I'm gonna use chat 4.0, and I'm gonna say, 
who would win in a battle? One horse-sized duck or 10 duck-sized horses? Okay, and so what 4.0 has to say is gonna be different than what 03. So I'm gonna copy this prompt, come back to my folder, change the model from 4.0 to 03, and paste the same prompt so that I can compare side by side. Okay, so it's gonna, oh, I wanna show you this thinking first. So it's gonna think on this. You notice the other one, just spat it right out. This one thought for a whole four seconds, and this is not a very difficult one, didn't need to do much research. But then it gave me like a table. This is the 03 version. The mass and the reach of each one, the weapons, the mobility, the psychology, and the likely outcome. 03 selects the horse-sized duck by a landslide, or rather a wing sweep. Clever, very clever. And when I go back to 4.0, the battle scenario comparison, I get these emoji bullets, which I hate. I'm really finding those to be one of the dead giveaways that this is AI generated content when there's an emoji at the center of the bullet. And this just gives me a pros and cons list, right? These are the pros of the horse sized duck and the pros and cons of the duck sized horses and the verdict. If it's open terrain, the horse sized duck probably wins. If it's a confined space with obstacles, the duck sized horses could potentially swarm and outmaneuver the big bird. But realistically, the duck wins. Size does matter when you can bite 10 enemies in one snap. <laughs> Do you want a version of this formatted as a D&D style stat card battle? We don't need to go there at the moment. But when I go back to the 03 version, it also selected the horse sized duck. And so they both came to the same conclusion and so which one was better? It didn't, they didn't give me different answers, but the way they got there was different. And I gotta say, this table, this, I really like this breakdown. And so if I'm doing something that's navigational, you know, if I'm gonna be going, I, I just wanna know something simple, I'll use GPT-40, because as it says, it's great for most tasks. But if I need thinking, if I need multi-step reasoning, if I need something where I want a strategic partner and I'm willing to wait while it cooks, sometimes you put in a prompt and it takes a little bit of time. This took me a minute and 14 seconds and I could either sit here and twiddle my thumbs or I could open ChatGPT in another tab and go and do some other things while this is cooking. And so this is what I'm finding is that a lot of being a good AI operator is a matter of style. And knowing which models you have to play with is how you can create a style that suits you best as an AI operator. So try a couple of different AI models and let me know how you go. Good luck out there.